it's Rob! Tony! We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name. And today we're going to cover five more quick tips to make you an overall better Hearthstone player. We had made uh, one of these videos a couple months ago and uh, we figured why not add on to the five original tips we made with five more tips uh, that we've come up with, well, Tony and I have come up with over the course of the past couple weeks that we figured we'd share to you guys. Keep in mind that these tips aren't in any order by any means. You can apply everything we say in this video to every single game you play in Hearthstone. It's not class specific and uh, hopefully you'll be able to increase your win rate and as we mentioned before overall be a better Hearthstone player and hopefully of course reach that legend mark. So our first tip in this episode is going to be mulligans. Uh, in our previous video we had talked about our opponent's mulligans and to keep track of you know what cards they keep in their opening hand versus cards that they discard because you can get a good indication of how good your opponent's hands are, hand is depending on of course how many cards they keep and discard. But we didn't really talk about your mulligans and which cards you should keep uh, depending on what class you are versus what class your opponent is. I'm going to throw out the example of me playing a warrior versus going against maybe like a warlock. We can assume that playing against a warlock, 90% of the time they're going to be playing a zoo warlock, which is a very aggressive uh, base deck. It uh, starts off very strong and they kind of lose steam after a while. So knowing this, uh, when we're playing the warrior, we want to mulligan the card. We want to mulligan for cards such as Fiery War Axe, Slam, Bash, Ravaging Ghoul. Kind of that early game in the warrior deck to be able to withstand uh, the powerhouse Zoo puts out early on. For example, let's say we're going against a priest the next game. Uh, keeping, you know, uh, Fiery War Axe is always a good thing, but Ravaging Ghoul probably not so much. So let's say if a Jeskar True Heart or at least Star Seeker winds up in our hand, maybe keeping those to be able to play them later on in the game is okay because we know that Priests uh, in particular have a very slow start and most of the time you're able to get away with not having to play a creature that early in the game, unlike if you go against maybe a Zoo, like we had mentioned before, a, a more uh, aggressive and fast-paced deck. Our tip number two is knowing what you're playing against. Of course, we're going to know the class of your opponent because it tells you that. But more specifically, it doesn't tell you what kind of deck they're playing within that class. So for example, we're playing against a mage. There's a variety of different mage decks that kind of fall under the mage class. Uh, for example, let's throw out Tempo Mage, which is a fairly aggressive deck, versus, let's say, maybe a Freeze Mage, which is a lot slower control base, and it aims to kill you in one to two turns after it's accumulated uh, the cards needed to do so. Obviously, depending on the deck you're playing, you're going to be playing a very different strategic game if you're going against maybe a Tempo Mage versus a Freeze Mage. So how you play that match is going to be vastly different knowing kind of what deck your opponent's playing. And this just comes with playing Hearthstone. So for example, a good indicator of maybe a Freeze Mage is turn two Loot Hoarder, or maybe a turn three Arcane Intellect, uh, or maybe a Secret on turn three. All of these kind of signify that that may in fact be a Freeze Mage. And by turn four or five, you should have a good idea of kind of what deck your opponent is playing, no matter what class they're playing against. And of course, this will just come with playing Hearthstone and uh, knowing the different decks that are out there. We also have, I believe, um, an entire, I, I mean, I know we do, <laughs> we have an entire video dedicated to going over popular decks that are out at the moment, and I'll throw that annotation to the side. So moving to tip number three, which is very closely related with tip number two, and there's definitely, you know, overlapping there, they're vastly different. And knowing what you're playing against versus knowing your win condition to that deck kind of go hand in hand, but like I mentioned, they're different, because let's say we've identified we're playing a Freeze Mage, okay, so now that we've identified that, how do we beat the Freeze Mage with the current deck we're playing? So you can kind of break win condition down into two segments here. Um, there's a win condition versus a particular matchup, which you know is very specific and kind of advanced. But then you have the win condition that is for your deck in general. So let's play. Let's say you're playing Cthune Druid. Uh, you, generally, your main win condition is you know you buff up the Cthune, you play Cthune down. He either kills your opponent or gives you enough advantage at that point in time because he's killed basically probably everything they have and dealt a sizable amount of damage to their face that you're able to win maybe one or two turns later because you played your Cthune as your win condition. Uh, more specifically, uh, maybe you're playing against a Freeze Mage with a Druid. Um, the win condition may not be Cthune there because, as we know, Freeze Mage does a really good job at being able to stop your opponent from attacking um, and or clearing their board so they don't actually have any creatures to attack with. So your win condition maybe in that situation is to use your hero power as many times as you can, try to generate as much armor as you can with the druid hero power, because we know Freeze Mage has a limited amount of damage. So if you can kind of withstand 
their um, their fury of spells that they're gonna fly at, or fling at you, uh, you'll do a fair job at beating them then. Or you can use maybe some cards such as Innervate or Wild Growth to be able to pump out some really big creatures they're not able to deal with early on. Um, so they're wasting their spells to kill those creatures instead of dealing damage to your face. Again, determining your win condition more specifically to the class you're playing against versus just your deck archetype as a whole is really advanced, but it's just stuff to keep in mind if you're trying to become the next level player, which hopefully all of us are, because we're always striving to get better, of course. Our tip number four is a little bit easier than tip number two and three. I know those were a doozy, guys, but you know what? I'm trying to give you the best information possible, and um, those tips are definitely going to be what puts you apart from, you know, your average Hearthstone player to your, you know, experienced or uh, veteran Hearthstone players that are able to hit Legends. So, uh, with that said, moving on to tip number four, uh, play easier classes if you're a beginner player, such as maybe a Hunter or a Mage. I know when I first started Hearthstone, I told myself, Rogue, uh, Priest, and Warrior were going to be my main classes, and I was going to focus on them the most, and I was going to become, you know, the best at those. Uh, but little did I know uh, that those are some of the hardest classes to play in Hearthstone, just due to the fact that those decks require, you know, a large quantity of epics and legendaries to do well. Um, they're very, uh, depending on what class, especially Rogue is combo, Rogue is combo based, and then Warrior in itself is just a very slow deck, which means you need to play out like you have to keep your move cons moves consistent throughout the entire game and you have a game plan every single turn that kind of goes into an overall strategy of the deck. But maybe some classes like Hunter or um, Mage, uh, they, the games normally last a little bit, you know, they're shorter and the play style is a little bit more straightforward. There's not, you know, this huge overlapping strategic goal with the deck, um, more so just being able to play the most efficient minions every turn, make value trades and just go from there. So as a beginner player, in Hearthstone, I would definitely aim to play uh, decks such as Hunter or Mage as those decks. Uh, they have really good starting cards, so it doesn't cost a, a whole lot to build these budget-based decks that will be fairly consistent for you versus maybe like the Priest or the Warrior that in order for those decks to perform well, you have to have some of those expensive cards that of course beginner players, not every single one has. So again, Hunter or Mage are a good starting point for any of the uh, new players out there uh, looking to play really solid decks. Uh, for a cheap cost that are kind of like a good introductory class, more or less. So moving to tip number five, take your time and think ahead. So as simple as these kind of may sound and as, you know, you're like, of course I'm going to take my time and of course I'm going to think ahead. This is a strategy card game. If you're not thinking, what are you doing playing it? <laughs> um, I found more times than not after you've played a deck for let's say you're playing mage right and uh, you've been playing mage for a couple days or maybe a couple weeks or even a couple months you find yourself uh, going against some some uh, I would say definitely sometimes the same classes but uh, you find yourself in like this motion where you're like all right I've seen how this plays out I've seen when my opponent plays this card and I have this cards in my this particular card in my hand I'm gonna play this against that and it worked out for me in the past so of course I'm gonna play it again and it's hopefully gonna work out for me now um, and we kind of get in this mode of thinking where it's like all, some of our moves are almost automatic, right? Like you're just like, oh, this goes here, that goes there, this of course goes there. And uh, this causes you to, you know, play quicker, which you're not taking your time at that point. You're kind of just auto-generating, you can say, your plays. Um, and I definitely can classify myself as being one of these players that do that because it's just, you know, automatic. You've done this match so many times, you've played the, against that class so many times, and you've, you know, you've, there's only 30 cards in your deck, so you've played a lot of these cards you know, a lot. <laughs> um, but the problem with this is that you kind of miss out on maybe some subtle, small hints that a, maybe a different card uh, would be better in that particular situation because you're so automated in playing, you know, those, those particular cards in that particular particular situation at that specific time. So I would definitely say when you find yourself, you're like, wow, I played that turn extremely quick. Be like, okay, maybe I should slow it down a little bit and see what else I could have done. Even though you may know the best play and the best play is obvious to you. Like, of course, I'm going to frostbolt his, you know, Sorcerer's Apprentice or whatever card he has down that you would like to frostbolt. Just sit back and think and be like, all right, well, maybe he has this next turn, or maybe he has this the following turn. Is there a different card I can maybe choose to deal with this Sorcerer's Apprentice that I can save Fireball and combo it maybe with Archmage? Um, all of these things are kind of uh, combos and pieces of the puzzle that you need to all fit in together um, to make sure you're just not playing, you know, just auto-generated moves because you're like, oh yeah, this definitely goes there. Uh, always take your time, guys. You have 45 seconds. Even if you rope out every turn, one of the best players in Hearthstone, uh, Life Coach, uh, he's known for, you know, he, they call him Rope Coach because he always ropes out his plays. Uh, but the thing is, 
he's one of the best players in Hearthstone, and the reason being is he always takes his time, he always looks for the best play, he always looks ahead, and he takes his time and he thinks about his plays. And this is one of those things that, you know, it's going to come with experience, it's going to come with time, uh, but guys, I couldn't stress this enough. I mean, I, I fall prey to this, like I mentioned before, so many times. Uh, just think about your plays and um, look at your hand and find the, uh, the most optimal play that turn. So with all of this said, hopefully you've enjoyed this kind of general uh, tip uh, video to make you an overall better Hearthstone player. If you didn't check out our first tip video, I would recommend watching that. I'll put the annotation there to the side. And if you've watched that and you're moving on to this one, I'm glad you're enjoying them enough to come uh, come back again and watch this. Um, of course, let me know what you the com or let me know what you think of these videos in the comment section below. Or if you have any tips I may have missed out on, or maybe some tips for future videos that we can do, I am all ears to that. As these videos again are for you guys and to help promote um, or not to help promote, but to help you be, an, again, an overall better Hearthstone player with an end goal of getting all of you guys to that sweet, sweet legend rank. So with that said, of course, guys, I am Warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is.